Hello and welcome to my next GCSE video on waves and the universe. Now, the universe, what is it made up of? You have planets like the Earth, so in where we are, we all the planets near us, we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune and Pluto is a dwarf planet. You also have a star, the Sun. Now, if you have a lot now th these planets and the star make up a solar system you have a solar system and another solar system and lots of solar systems all together they will form a galaxy in this case I've called it the Milky Way because that's what our galaxy is called and you have I put galaxy 2 and galaxy 3 loads of different galaxies together and that's the universe so you have planet in a solar system in a galaxy in a universe now you can explore the, um, explore the universe using telescopes and a lot of stuff in the book I think I'm going to go over quite quickly because it is quite simple or not as much to be questioned on. Now you can explore the universe using these telescopes. Most objects that astronomers observe give out energy in all parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Modern telescopes can detect any of them so x-ray images or ultraviolet and you can look at the wavelengths of different parts of space and you can detect what is there. And then we are also currently investigating alien life. This is using space probes, rovers going to Mars, looking for signals coming through. There's the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, or SETI. That is a series of projects to analyse analyze radio waves coming from space because we use radio waves to transfer information a lot, you know, in TV and they want to see if anyone else does that too out there. So, stars. Now stars are made from a nebula. Now this is when, this is a cloud of dust and gases, usually hydrogen, more mainly hydrogen. And then the stars are formed when a nebula is pulled together by gravity. And then it, as the contracting cloud gets more dense, it gets more dense, it heats up and may begin to glow. And eventually it becomes so big that it will form a protostar. And then what makes it is a big proper sun is that the temperatures and pressures in the centre of the protostar become high enough to force hydrogen nuclei, so hydrogen to fuse together to form helium. This is called this is nuclear fusion. And this is what give, makes sun give out energy or stars give out energy. Now stars have a life cycle. So at the top is a normal sun or a normal star. At the bottom is a massive star because they have slightly different cycles. At the top, so you have a cloud of gas, that's a nebula. It will be pulled together into a protostar and then we'll start reacting and form a star. Now, stars can remain stable for about 10 million billion, sorry, 10 billion years until they fused most of their hydrogen to helium. When this happens, the core of the star is not hot enough to withstand gravity and it collapses and the outer layers will expand and will form a red giant star. Now, other fusion reactions will happen inside red giants, but, and the star will remain as the red giant for about a billion years before throwing off a shell of gas and, will, so, and then become a shell of glass. And then the rest of the star will be pulled together by gravity and will collapse to form a white dwarf star. No fusion Reactions happen inside a white dwarf and will eventually cool over about a billion years to be a black dwarf. Massive stars start with the same cloud of gas, protostar, but then forms a massive star. They fuse hydrogen to helium fast and they become red supergiants. At the end of the red supergiant period, the star will rapidly collapse and then explode. In this explosion called a supernova, the outer layers of the supergiant are cast off and expand outwards. Now what is left is either two things. If it's really big, it will form a black hole. And this is when everything's just sucked and not even light can escape. If, it remain, if the remains are not massive enough to form a black hole, gravity will pull them together to form a small, very dense star called a neutron star. Theories of the universe. There are two main theories. You have the Big Bang and Steady State. Big Bang. There was a massive bang at the beginning, the universe started expanding. All the matter that was in the universe when it first exploded is still here now. You cannot gain or lose matter. Now, as you see, there are four dots I've drawn. They're just expanding. They expand outwards. 
steady state is when the universe is expanding but all the time it's expanding new material is created and all the other places stay where they are so if you look at the first one three dots the three dots are in roughly the same place but in the second one four new dots appear which are in the same space for the next two then more dots and more dots so the universe expands but creates new material now 964 two astronomers actually discovered remnants of the big bang they found radiation called cosmic microwave background radiation and this one's the evidence towards the big bang now both steady state and big bangs we said say that they are expanding the universe is expanding but this cosmic microwave background radiation provides supporting evidence for the big bang theory and the steady state theory cannot explain this the big bang theory is generally the one ex um one um accepted by most astronomers another bit of evidence for the expanded universe is called redshift which we'll come on to next all right i've very simply just drawn two diagrams here now if you've ever noticed a siren go past so a police car the pitch will get will get higher and then we'll get lower as it goes away from you so it gets hot so it goes do like that now this is because sound waves behind a moving sound source become stretched making the frequency lower and now this is essentially what happens with redshift so what happens is the if something is moving away from a planet the wavelengths become stretched because light has wavelength as we discussed in the previous physics video so as it's moving away it stretches the wavelength increases and as you know or hopefully you know red red light has slightly higher wavelength than blue light now if the galaxy was moving towards us the wavelength would decrease in size and it would become you get a blue shift but this proves that the universe is moving or the universe expanding galaxies are moving away from each other and this is what redshift is. now what actually is redshift what is what's the red about if you look at a spectrum and look at the light coming through it you have a spectrum of light and this will have a continuous rainbow of colors except for a few black lines now those black lines are just gaps in the spectrum that's what you need to know but with redshift galaxies further away from us have these black lines shifted slightly closer to the red end so instead of having let's say one exactly on the green verge you have one slightly closer to yellow than just on green and that's what redshift is, is shifting to the red side of the electromagnetic spectrum uh, that is quite a confusing concept so i hope you get that sound human range of hearing is about 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz which is 20,000 hertz if anything below 20 hertz any frequency below 20 hertz that is called infrasound any um, frequency above 20 kilohertz or 20,000 hertz is ultrasound now infrasound, infrasound is useful for studying animals animals such as elephants or giraffes can move many kilometers each day and often lives in forests where it's difficult to find them biologists can use microphones that detect infrasounds to find the animals because lots of animals big animals will use infrasounds and can hear infrasounds lots of small animals can hear ultrasounds as well also natural events such as volcanic eruptions create infrasound waves that we as well as sound waves in here but also these infra wa sound waves which can be detected same with meteors you can detect these infrared or well not infrared sorry infrasound waves ultrasound is like sonar some objects such as bats can detect obstacles and other objects around them using ultrasound waves they are reflected and then the organism can listen for the echoes and where they are coming from we use very similar in sonar we can also use ultrasound scans this is what we use to detect pregnancies because it can show you know, basically where the baby is in the womb seismic waves now this is caused by earthquake the moments inside 
Movements inside the Earth, such as an earthquakes, cause waves to be transmitted. There are two types, P waves and S waves. S waves are transverse. They move rocks from side to side, because they are S waves, side to side. P waves, they push and pull on the rocks, so up and down. And they are longitudinal waves, sound waves. And then the point on the surface of the Earth directly above the focus, the focus is that little centre bit in the middle. So you look at the dotted line going up, at the top is the epicentre of the earthquake. Now, that is, the point on the Earth is right above and will probably have the most reaction from these waves. Now, you can detect earthquakes using seismometers. 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 Um, now, you'll do, you'll have three, at, uh, three around a certain point. And what you can do is, if you detect how far the waves are from A, B and C, you can then work out where the epicenter is and work out where the earthquake was. And also, these seismometers will trace the waves in the earthquake. So first you have nothing. P waves give a little bit of interference, but then the S waves arrive. Now these are really big waves. These cause a lot of movement. And they will be a combination of P and S, but the S will really cause lots of movement up and down. And what you can do is work out the time difference between the arrival of the first P wave and the first S wave and work out how far away they're using at because you can work out speed and distance using that. And that is all. Thank you for watching. As usual, if you have any questions, ask, comment, like, subscribe, whatever. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.